Good morning. Welcome to worship with First Christian Reformed Church in Grand Rapids. I'm Pastor Adam, and it's an exciting Sunday to welcome you to as we're nearing closer and closer to Christmas. Uh, It's the fourth Sunday of Advent, the last one before we get to celebrate the coming of God to earth in the form of a baby in a manger. And so this worship service will have a very uh, Christmas feel and longing for that final coming of Christ. Our Christmas service will be recorded on Christmas Eve on Thursday. So anytime Thursday afternoon on Christmas Eve or on Christmas Day, you can access uh, the Christmas service on our YouTube channel and worship uh, and celebrate the coming of Jesus. If you are uh, planning to submit a video for a song, if you're part of the adult choir or want to join uh, that virtual choir, or kids, Any of you kids who are planning to sing Go Tell It It on the Mountain or Away in a Manger, uh, send your videos to John Witte today uh, and then you'll be part of those virtual choirs uh, for our Christmas service. So thank you for all of you who have already submitted videos and we'd love to see more come in for that service. Uh, A few things, announcements before we dive into worship. One is that uh, later in the service we will end our service with communion. So if you want to gather juice or wine and some bread to celebrate communion, uh, please do so. Also, uh, a couple weeks ago, we announced that uh, Kathy Ostindi was finishing her time as uh, an administrator at our church. Uh, And we also need to announce that Rachel Witte is resigning from her position as administrator in our church as well. Uh, Rachel has served alongside Kathy. Both of them started at the same time 15 years ago. Uh, So again, a great loss for them both to be leaving and Rachel has blessed us so much with her gifts, uh, her love uh, in the office, her humor as well and just it's been a joy working with her and so she will be missed as well. She continues uh, her work as bookkeeper so she will continue being employed by the church Uh, but she will also be serving uh, home repair services with her gifts. All right, as we dive into worship, uh, we've been opening our worship services with scripture passages from Isaiah. And today, I want to read uh, Isaiah 11, verses 1 through 10. Uh, This is a passage that will be very familiar to all of you, but one that helps us see the vision for what the Messiah brings to earth. So hear these words from Isaiah 11. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of the knowledge of fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. Let's pray together. God, as we come to worship, we enter your presence, and we pray that your spirit will fill this place, will fill our homes where we are worshiping you, God, we pray that uh, your kingdom of peace that Isaiah talks about would be a reality among us, both in our own lives and in our world. May your spirit of peace be with us as we worship and lead us to live with and for you 
in the world around us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we will enter more fully into worship through song. You're invited to uh, sing along with the praise team at home. If you want, you can stand. uh, But join us as we worship God through song. powerful God who deserves all honor and glory, who controls all things, yet who came as a baby to be with us, is with us now and greets us with these words, grace to you and peace from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now you're invited to greet those who may be with you worshiping right now or send a text message to someone and then also receive this mutual greeting from Household 9. Hi, First Church. We're the Shy Docs. I'm Jeff. And Karen. And this is Denver. And we wish you tidings of comfort and joy this season. And may the peace of Christ be with you now and always. Good morning. We are the Bajamas. I am Joe. I am Elizabeth. And Dan. We wish you all a blessed worship and have a blessed Christmas. My name is Carla Marion, and I hope everybody at church has a good Christmas and a happy holiday. And I hope to be coming back to church pretty soon. I miss church and miss you all. Amen. Good morning and Christmas blessings, First Church. I'm Dave Leapson, and today I praise God for all of you that can join us in worship today, and I pray for those who can't. Have a great Christmas. Thank you. 
I'm Judy Heisinger. I'm Jerry Heisinger. May the peace of God be with you in this Advent season. Have a wonderful Sunday. Be blessed and be safe. Hi, we're Jim and Mary Van Wingerden. We're grateful to be able to worship you, with you in this way, but even though it's at a distance, Merry Christmas. Hello, I'm John Iwewa. May grace and peace fill each one of us as we worship the God who came to earth to be one of us. It's Mary Gabor, welcoming you to the service today. Hope you have a good one. Hi, this is Larry Tannis. I'd like to wish you a happy Sunday. And I'm Mary Ann, and uh, we're really thankful for um, being able to say hello, and we know that even though we're apart, we're together in spirit. Merry Christmas. We miss you. We are, and we do. From Bill and Anita Beam, may Christ's peace and his presence be real to you as you worship today and always. Merry Christmas. One of the traditions of the church uh, during Advent is to light candles, one extra candle each week to anticipate the coming of Jesus Christ, uh, the growing light representing the light coming in the darkness of our earth. And so this week we get to light four candles, uh, and we are thankful to Tom and Gail Zandi for leading us in the Advent candle lighting. On the first Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle of hope 
and we're reminded to put our hope in God's promises of Christ's return so that we might be with him forever. On the second Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle of love to represent God's lavish love for us, that we might be like Jesus when he returns. On the third Sunday of Advent, we lit, lit the candle of glory to represent the glory we receive when we are raised in Christ. Today we light the candle of joy that celebrates the birth of the Savior of the world and also anticipates the day which is coming when we sit down at the table of our Lord and enjoy his presence forever. A reading from Frederick Beekner. In the Gospel of John, Jesus sums up pretty much everything by saying, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. He said these words at the supper that he knew was the last one before his death. Happiness turns up, more or less, where you'd expect to find it. A good friendship, a rewarding job, a pleasant vacation. Joy, on the other hand, is as notoriously unpredictable as the one who bequeaths it. Thank you, uh, Tom and Gail, for leading us in the Advent lighting. And now we will transition into a time of prayer for our congregation and for the world around us. And before we do so, uh, a few things to keep in mind uh, this week in prayer. Uh, first, we celebrate with Bill and Sue Sweetman, who are celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary tomorrow. So congratulations, Bill and Sue. That's uh, an exciting milestone. We also... Uh, Join together in prayer. Uh, there's a few people in the hospital right now. Rick Hamilton uh, was supposed to start chemo treatments this week, but he has uh, some infections. One is uh, by his port, with his port for chemo. So he's actually in the hospital right now getting um, treated for infections, and we just pray that that can be cleared up soon and he can return home and then uh, start treatments as soon as possible. Uh, also, Brian Howard uh, continues to uh, be in critical condition in the hospital with COVID-19. Uh, we sent out an email earlier this week asking for special prayers for Brian. Uh, those prayers uh, are needed still. Uh, Brian is really in critical condition, so please pray for him. Uh, if you uh, hear names listed and you don't know who they are, go to the Pulse and look up their photo online and you can see who it is that we're praying for. Uh, we also, during this time, want to remember uh, those who are part of our church family who are incarcerated right now. Uh, Brian Blakely Jr., Robbie Needham, Ed Werbel uh, are all not with family and friends during Christmas, so just pray for them, and you can send them cards during this time as well, wishing them a Merry Christmas. Also, our missionaries uh, with First Church, uh, during this time where they're away from family, and uh, experiencing the challenges of COVID as we are, but in a different country, uh, they could use your prayers and encouragement as well. So let's go to God in prayer. God, in this Advent season, we continue to long, long for you to return, for your kingdom to fully come. We light candles in anticipation of the light coming into the darkness. And we celebrate with joy that you did come as a child to this earth. That you took on our flesh, lived with us, taught us, healed us, died for us, and rose to life so that we can live with you. 
We thank you that your spirit is present in the world with us, and we pray that your light would continue to illuminate the dark places in our lives and our world. God, we pray that in this Advent season, you would help us to both see and recognize your light and work to bring that light to the people and places around us. God, as we wait for Emmanuel, God with us, we pray that you would be present in a special way with those who are sick in hospital. We pray for Rick Hamilton, that you would heal the infections that he's experiencing and that he would be able to return home soon. We pray for Brian Howard, Lord. We just pray that you bring healing to his lungs. You would help him to recover, to get off the ventilator, to be able to come home. God, we just pray that your healing hand would be upon him. There are many others that haven't been listed in recent church emails or shared from up front who are experiencing health issues. Others who are family members and friends who aren't part of this church family. God, we pray for them now. Lord, we also ask that you're so present with those who are experiencing depression, anxiety, seasonal affective disorder, other mental illnesses. During this holiday season, it can be so lonely, so isolating. A time that's so filled with joy can also be a time that feels so dark and heavy. And so God, we pray for your healing for those who are experiencing mental illness. We pray that you be with those who are family members and friends who are supporting and walking alongside those who are in the shadow of darkness right now. We pray that your light would break through, that you would bring healing. We thank you for those in professions that care for our mental health. And we pray that you encourage them during this time. God, we also pray that you be with those who uh, are feeling alone this Christmas because of COVID restrictions. They can't have family gather around them. They can't go and travel to be with others. Or for those who are feeling an acute loneliness because of loss of a loved one, whether that be a friend, a parent, a child, a spouse, God, we pray for your tender mercy to be near, that you would comfort those who are mourning during this time. We pray for those who live abroad. Some are missionaries, some are not, but we pray that you would also encourage them, help them to know the joy of you coming during this season while they are far away. We thank you for tools and technologies that allow us to connect for Zoom and other video chats, and we just are grateful, and we pray that we would be able to still be connected even though we are apart. God, during this season when you humbled yourself to become a child and to save us, we pray that you would help us to be humble. Forgive us for the ways that we don't live according to the goodness that you've extended to us. We are so grateful for your grace and your salvation, and we pray for your forgiveness when we respond in ways that are sinful, hurtful, evil. Humble us, Lord. Help us to see our shortcomings and to come to you again and again for your grace and your love. And we pray that you would help us to extend forgiveness to those who have hurt us or to offer apology to those whom we have hurt. There are many right now who have walked away from the church because your people have not lived as you called us to live. And we pray that during this Christmas season, the good, beautiful message of God coming as a human would not be hindered 
or harmed by our actions and our inabilities to love as you called us to love. We pray that your message would break forth and break through hardness of hearts, those who have been hurt by the church. May they see again your goodness and love in new light. God, we pray that above all else this Christmas season, your message of love and salvation would be proclaimed. May it be proclaimed through our worship and may it be proclaimed through our lives. We love you and we can't wait for you to come again. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. And now is the time where we would normally receive our offerings. Uh, We invite you to give through the ways that you see on the screen, through mail or text or online. Uh, And as you give, uh, we ask that you pray. Pray that the finances that you give would be used to really bless those in the neighborhood, in our church, in the world, and that our church would truly be a testimony of God's light in the world. So thank you for your faithfulness in giving and thank you for praying that we would be a witness and for joining in that witness through your actions and your words and your lives. And now we uh, go to God in song again uh, with the song, What Child Is This? So you can join the praise team in singing. Amen. The babe, the son of Mary. Well, like Adam said, we're getting closer and closer to Christmas. This is the 
fourth Sunday. You can almost taste and smell Christmas. You, you probably can in your own home, right? Some of you have fresh cut greenery, maybe from a pine tree that's up as your Christmas tree or a wreath, and you can smell Christmas. You, you smell it when you bake your cookies. Maybe it's sprinkling a little cinnamon on the eggnog. Oh, it's, it's a delightful time. Have you had a chance to go outside and, and take a look around at the lights at night? It, I may be wrong on this, but it seems to me more people have put up lights this year than probably ever before. Christmas. For many of us, it's the, the most wonderful time of the year. But not for everyone. It made me wonder a little bit as we've been thinking about Jesus returning and, and living with Jesus forever. Do you, do you think we'll celebrate Christmas in heaven? Do, do you think there's a day, right, where we celebrate his birth? It's probably not going to be December 25. Speaking of which, um, how will we mark days in time when we're in forever with Jesus, will we decorate? Will we sing, what child is this? Will there, will there be Christmas celebrations in heaven? I think so. While the Bible does not tell us specifically about a Christmas celebration in heaven, it does something that is really quite amazing. It, it speaks of a wedding that takes place in heaven. It's, it's the wedding of the Lamb, which will take place when we're all gathered together. Imagine a wedding in heaven. Can you imagine what the invitation might sound like, might look like if it was given to us? Well, it might look something like this. Imagine a letter, an invitation coming to your home in the mail. Might it go something like this? Christmas card. Spark came. What's that? Huh. Hey, Cal, we got, we got an invitation. Man, it looks like someone's going to try to get married. I can't believe anybody tries to send out an invitation for a social gathering during a pandemic. <laughs> Talk about faith. Huh. It says here that the wedding of the lamb has come. Wedding of the lamb. Lamb. The only lamb I know is Jesus Christ. Hey, we've been inviting to the wedding of Jesus. It says here that his bride has made herself ready. I wonder who Jesus is getting married to. Well, it looks like the bride's wedding dress is quite simple. It says fine linen, bright and clean. It was given to her to wear. Wait, there's an explanation for the wedding dress. The linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. You know me? Hey, honey, we're God's holy people, right? I hope so. Oh, oh it looks like there's a reception. <laughs> All right. It says here, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. 
Hey, we've been invited to the wedding of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, whose bride is dressed in linens that my righteous acts help fashion. Huh. Strange. There's no date for the wedding. RSVP. The blessing is in the invitation. Hey, Cal, you got to see this. Well, can you imagine getting such an invitation at your home? Wow. To be invited to such a wedding. Now, now you might say, okay, where did you come up with that little scene? Well, how, how, what, where does this come from? Well, it's found in Revelation 19. If you do have a Bible close by, you might want to open it up. We're about to hear the first nine verses that speak of this wedding. When you listen to the scripture this morning, you'll note that there are four times the word hallelujah, praise the Lord, come. Note those hallelujahs, they're hard to miss. And then when we hear the word of God and come back, we'll try to piece together what is this wedding? What is it referring to and, and what might it mean for us, the ones who are invited to the wedding of the Lamb? Hear the word of God from Revelation chapter 19. Revelation 19. After this I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. And again they shouted, Hallelujah! The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. The twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who was seated on the throne, and they cried, Amen! Hallelujah! Then a voice came from the throne, saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, both great and small. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roaring of rushing waters, and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah! For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad, and give him glory forever. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Then the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, there's Revelation 19, and thank you to the Drenth family. What a gift it was to have them give us the reading today. It's quite amazing, right? You, you've probably heard, and I'll move over here so that you can see that we got hallelujah four times. And, and maybe you noted what's going on here with the hallelujahs. The first hallelujah is... And Trevor, if you can get me, because I'm stuck here, I think. The first hallelujah is coming, looking back at something. And what it's looking back at is the fall of Babylon, the, the fall of the Roman Empire. The hallelujah comes out because 
there was a regime named Rome, and it fell. It, it was in opposition to the kingdom of God. On the wedding day of the Lamb comes a look backward. And, and what the look does is it's showing us what's been defeated. And it's Babylon, it's Rome, it's, why for that matter, it's any dictatorship, any dynasty, any democracy. All of them are defeated. All of them struggle because at the heart of each one of those is power. And when you talk about power, you will always talk about greed and you will always have injustice. It's the nature of power in this world, on this earth. The first hallelujah is coming from looking back and seeing that none of that lasts. All democracies, all dynasties, all dictatorships are defeated. Hallelujah. And, and then comes the second hallelujah. The second hallelujah talks about the smoke. It actually is referring to the judgment. All of the things we just described, they, they don't just get reprimanded. No. They're raised, they're they're burned to the ground, if you will. All that is left is smoke. There's a judgment here, and it calls forth a hallelujah, praise the Lord, which leads to the third hallelujah. The first two hallelujahs were looking back at something that was accomplished, something that was done, a victory that's been claimed. This third hallelujah is coming from 24 elders and four living creatures. Now we have to admit, John did write some poetic words here as we try to figure out, well, well, who are the, the 24 elders? Are they 24 priests? Do they represent um, the 12 tribes along with the 12 disciples? Are they particular saints? We are not quite sure. And those four living creatures, uh, is it possible that's the, the ox and the lion and, and then the, the eagle? Who are, who are these creatures? What, what does this all mean? Other than on the day of the wedding, the present day, together they say, Amen, so shall it be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We almost get the sense that they've, they've kind of looked back at the victory, the judgment, and now in the moment they sing out, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which leads us to the final hallelujah. It's, it's the hallelujah that comes from the, the servants. Dare we say this might be our hallelujah? This will be the hallelujah we call out. We are the servants of the Most High, the servants of Jesus Christ, the servants of the Lamb. Hallelujah! Praise and glory belong to him. For we are calling out hallelujah for what we will see soon. A wedding. A wedding of the Lamb. We take a little step back here and let this wash over us a bit. In part because it's we're, we're trying to picture a wedding in heaven. We're trying to picture, well, the Lamb. It's pretty hard not to say that's Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. There's enough references to make that clear. We, we wonder about Jesus, who for 32, 33 years on earth never married. And now, when we're all gathered together after the final resurrection, there will be a wedding 
the lamb will become married. That, that takes us by surprise. We realize that, boy, it can't be like a typical marriage that we're thinking of. Although there certainly has to be elements of deep love. And, and the, the commitment, the everlasting covenant made at a wedding, that certainly fits. We think about this for a bit, and then we see that there is a bride who's been readied. Who's the bride? Well, we, we've always assumed, right? The bride is the church. And when we think about the church, we, we think, well, the church, why, that's you, and that's me. We know this about the bride. The, the bride is adorned fairly simply, uh, fine linen, and the threads of the fine linen have been woven together by the righteous acts of God's holy people. We kind of think, well, I'd like to be considered God's holy people, right? So we're trying to play off this imagery of, okay, on, on this day that's coming, there's going to be a wedding. The wedding might actually be between the lamb and between you and me. Have you ever thought that you're going to be married to the Lamb when we're all gathered together? Such a thought doesn't come easily for us. It doesn't come easily in effect because we're people who walk in darkness. We're not thinking about a wedding with the lamb when we're thinking about a vaccine whose coming is longed for, whose coming offers an immediate relief, hopefully, to what we're enduring. For a people walking in darkness, hoping that we can be part of a country that can somehow pulled together, it's hard to think of a, a wedding with Jesus when we live in a democracy where right now it's starting to go up in smoke. Where the idea of truth is in the eye of the beholder. Where whether a court renders a decision, where a scientist offers some advice, whether truth is something determined by each person. And when truth is determined by individuals, smoke begins to rise, which often will fan into flame. For a people walking in this darkness of the day, whether that be big darkness of a global pandemic or national darkness of a never-ending election in the search for truth which goes nowhere, or whether it's in our own homes, finding it hard to sleep at night, uh, struggling, with feeling lonely and depressed, worried about an, an infection that now has come, worried about growing old, not being able to remember, wondering about, will there be the next paycheck? Can I hang on for at least three or four more months? Maybe... Maybe early spring will be in a much better place. The people walking in darkness. It, it's hard to think of the wedding 
to the Lamb in the middle of today. Which brings us here. It brings us to a table. You see, in the wedding that we're going to attend with Jesus where we might be the bride, there's a supper. At his wedding, there is a reception. I can kind of picture the reception. The first thought is the, the folks who are from the Congo will lead the dancing. They will be the dancers that will get the rest of us up on our feet and moving after the wedding is, is done. And there'll be great food. It, it will be the receptions of all receptions. It will be so great. But what gets us to that day? And it, and it turns out there's a rehearsal dinner. There's a rehearsal dinner because we're used to this, right? We have the wedding and before the wedding, the, the party, the bridal party gathers together and we, we practice walking down the aisle and we practice the lines. It, and then after that's all done, then there's typically a, a rehearsal meal. Oh, let's gather to gather. Let's hear stories about the two who are in love and plan to be in love forever. And then Jesus comes and he says to us, I, I have a rehearsal meal for you. <laughs> I'd like you to do it often, by the way. And he takes some bread And he gives thanks to God. I mean, after all, bread is a miracle. You have to admit, some seed that gets thrown in the ground that looks dead and then comes to life and then grows into a plant and it produces more seed and some of those seeds end up in this bread. You have to admit that's a miracle. Thank you for the bread. But he takes that bread, he gives thanks, and, and then he breaks it. And he offers us a piece of this bread. He, he says to us, I love you. You, you must know that my, my body has been broken for you. He wants us to look back at a victory. He wants us to look back and realize that there was a righteous act that took place on a cross that began to weave the threads of who we are. L look back, take, remember, you believe that my body was broken for you so that you're forgiven. That the invitation for you is legitimate. It's wholly made possible because of this. Notice that we're asked to look back at a victory on a cross, and then we're asked to believe. We move from that victory to the present day. Believe now, this is for you. And we say, hallelujah. But then what he does is he takes a cup, and again he gives thanks, because let's face it, a beverage that comes from a fruit, that's pretty good stuff, and where did that fruit come from? Another miracle. And then what he does is he pours it out into a cup. And he looks at all of us servants who are at the rehearsal meal. 
It says, I've been poured out for you. This is part of a new covenant, a new way of being together. In, in this rehearsal, you should drink from the cup, my cup. Allow my cup to fill you. Before we get to the, the wedding, We, we pause for a few seconds here to digest what's happening in this rehearsal meal, this preparation for our wedding day to the Lamb. We know that in a regular wedding, there's all kinds of things that we do. There are flowers to order, music to think about, there's making sure that we have the guest list. All of that has to be done in this wedding of the Lamb. There's something quite simple. Take and eat. Take and drink. Remember, look back, believe, present day, that we're moving toward your wedding day and my wedding day completely, fully, holy with Jesus Christ. Now there's one thing we should note about preparation. And it's a hard thing. The eating and the drinking point us to the cross. It points us to Christ who empties himself completely. He doesn't look at the glory as something to be grasped right now. No, he, he humbles himself and he enters the womb of a young woman. Such humility, emptying listening to his parents, growing up, trying to become educated, being son of God and son of man. Being told that what he offered was fake news. Being told that who he was will not work. Being told that the cost of his ushering in the kingdom will be his life. Emptying completely until there was nothing left. Blood and water flowed down. Nothing was left. Buried. The third day, he arose again, life, to reign. He, he had to rise, to be resurrected. For he needs to be married yet to you and to me. Such love. It's, it's hard for us to enter into the rehearsal meal. It's hard for us because what we're asked to do every day in preparation for our marriage with Jesus Christ, whatever that might look like, is to die, is to become empty. So that he fills us, 
so that all that is within us is Christ alone. The rehearsal is full of stops and starts. It gets interfered with pandemics and loss of job and depression. But we come to the rehearsal dinner to be fed so that we might get up once again tomorrow and move toward our wedding day fully, completely with Jesus Christ, the Lamb. In just a, a few moments, you're going to be asked to either reflect on these words and allow them to fill you in some way through the Spirit and, and to gather, hopefully, a cracker, bread, something that will help you remember, say hallelujah, believe, say hallelujah. Know that your judgment has been taken care of, hallelujah. And think about that day, the wedding of the lamb, the wedding of the supper. Before we do, we'll pray, and after that prayer, we'll have some instructions. Will you pray with me? Lord, we, we enter into this holy time, this holy meal, realizing your calling us into forever right now. You're calling us into a promise that you're giving us, a hope that will never disappoint an incredible future that touches us today. Oh, thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. While you gather the communion elements of grape or cracker, bread and wine or juice, I invite our praise team to come forward. They're going to sing a song while you're taking communion. It's a song of great mystery and paradox. It's about the lamb, who's also the shepherd. It's about the one who is crucified but lives and reigns forever. And so as you now gather and extend communion, either for yourself or with others, you might say to each other, take and eat and remember and believe and maybe by yourself or together you would want to say hallelujah. And then if you're dipping your elements or maybe taking them separately, also say hallelujah with the drinking of the cup. So our praise team will begin singing, and if you will now offer communion to one another at this time.
everlasting instant offers you this blessing. Now may the, the peace of God who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ the Lamb equip you with everything good for righteous acts to do his will. May he work in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be all praise, all glory, both now and forevermore. Amen.